hello everyone and welcome to this channel uh, on this channel I'll be taking you through flutter for web I'll be taking you through flutter in general but I'll start with flutter for web a few steps on how to get started with it and how to and how to configure this decay uh, general how to get started so as you can see i'm using the new chrome browser the new microsoft edge browser with the chromium engine and i'm really loving the experience so let's quickly go, go to the flutter website the search flutter mm. as you can see flutter is an open source mobile application development framework created by google it is used to, ve to develop applications for Android and iOS. I think this Wikipedia is not updated. Uh, it can be able to uh, the platforms Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, all things. So let's go to to the website mm, to just get a few steps on how to get started to show you. Uh, first you'll have to download the flat SDK. Mm. Yeah, from this Flutter website. Yeah, you can see this the website, the Flutter SDK. Mm, you can get started. Click on Get Started. You'll be able to download. I already have the Flutter SDK installed on my computer, so I'll just show you. You'll just download on Windows. You'll just download. For example, on my on my case, I'm using Windows. You'll just download. The flat SDK, place it in, in a certain directory. Eh? Don't put in don't put the directory into the program files or program files x86 folder. Just place it somewhere, either in the desktop, anywhere, anywhere you wish. Feel it secure. On Mac OS you'll do the same and on Linux you'll do the same. Mm, you set up an editor. Uh, on this tutorial on this particular video you'll be using IntelliJ because I already have it installed and it's kind of lightweight compared to Android Studio and other stuff. I'll be using IntelliJ. On future, on future I'll be exchanging the IDEs I'll be using. Yeah. On the IntelliJ you'll have to install the, the plugins. So let me quickly open my IntelliJ idea. Uh, if you'll not be willing to download the flat SDK, you can download. You can just download the Dart SDK. The last version, 2.3.0, supports Flutter web applications, and so we'll go on to do that. I'll show you how to do that. Just search that download. You go to the Dart SDK and download the tools. The SDK. That version 2.3.0 uh, supports uh, Flutter. Without, you don't need to download the. You don't need to download the Flutter SDK for you to get the that for you to get the Flutter for web plugin. So let's just install that SDK, and we we'll first download the the. Just download the data SDK and install it. So, okay, just download using the setup wizard. After downloading the app, then uh, we'll continue from there. So, I have my IntelliJ installed right now, and it started as you can see on the screen. 
and so I'll just go to this installation of plugins okay just go just click on configure go to plugins the plugins window will open on the plugins window just search flutter Select the marketplace of Flutter and you will get this plugin. So just install. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's about this license agreements. The, you'll get another notification. The plugin you want to install requires another plugin. That that is the language that we'll be using, which will have to be installed as well. Proceed, just click yes. It will download the Download the flat and the dart plugins into the IntelliJ, and you'll have to restart the IDE uh, for, for 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 the plugins to work as expected. So we'll go ahead and restart the IDE, and yeah, we'll get started. Uh, after downloading the Flutter SDK and installing the plugins on IntelliJ ID and restarting the IntelliJ IDE, first open uh, after restarting the IDE, click on create new project. Yeah, for me, you can see the plugins on, on the left side. I see the Flutter plugin and the Dart plugin. Um, to set the Dart SDK path, you can go to your Flutter directory, to your Flutter directory, to the binary, to the bin folder, and into the cache folder. You'll find the Dart SDK there. You can set it like that. Click OK. Or if you want, um, you, if you use the other way around to download the that is decay only without the flat SDK full you can just go to your program files where you installed your data SDK that is a 64-bit software development kit so it usually goes to the program files folder so click on that and set that as the SDK path it's just the same click OK and it will give you a few templates you see the angular dart web app the bare bones web app the console application, command line application, that package, the Flutter web app. So for this tutorial, as we are doing the Flutter web app uh, tutorial, Flutter for web, I will click on Flutter web app. Go to next. The project name, I will call it Flutter web tutorial. finish uh, Flutter is a very nice I that is a very nice language which is kind of JavaScript like uh, you need not uh, you will not take a lot of a, a, a lot of time to learn it it's a really easy language easy syntax strongly typed uh, JavaScript like so if you are coming from a web development kind of when uh, web development environment and it will not be difficult for you you'll easily get uh, to know how to use that and how to write it's a very nice language it supports hot reload which which is just a long term for instant instant compilation yeah it can compile instantly and yeah so as you're waiting for the project to load Let's just um, continue with the project and you, you make sure you have a, a nice browser installed, be it Microsoft Edge or Firefox or Chrome, either of the browsers, all of them are supported by Flutter for Web. And uh, uh, another tip, another info about Flutter is that Flutter for Web directly compiles to, to native code. Uh, so if it's in Android, it compiles to the native code on Android, to the native code on iOS, 
to the native code on web which is javascript and yeah the data is able to compile to javascript for yeah for it to run on browsers that's what happens behind the scenes you know so let's close this the projects continue to load uh even on the later on this channel i'll be taking you through other tutorials uh i'm open for suggestions you can contact me you can comment on the video to tell me what kind of programs or apps you would like me to use to create beat web apps beat it mobile apps both on ios and android yeah i've been doing flutter for something like four months and i've found it to be very interesting so on a first before you continue with any other project enough with any other activity in flutter uh no thanks no thanks no thanks uh for in any activity in flutter i mean before we go we go, we go on with any activity in flutter let's get the packages uh, we can go to the project tutorial the folder let's open up the folder uh, so that you can find the pubspec file which will help us get the dependencies so let's let's open up the folder you can get the pubspec.yaml file uh this this is just like the gradle for android users i know uh, and i want to open the pubs with the charm file you'll find two other options um, uh, some uh, four options uh on top of the window in the file so just tap on get dependencies and uh, yeah it will run the pub that get pub get to get the dependencies all the dependencies only we uh, so far we see only two dependencies on this only two dependencies and three developer dependencies and overrides so it will just download the dependencies and uh within no time uh will be up and running all these errors will be gone these errors are there just because we don't have the dependencies and once again the dependencies once the dependencies are resolved are downloaded to the app i will be ready to go so as it is continuing to resolve the de dependencies i'll post the video right here and i'll be back when the dependencies are fully downloaded it doesn't take much time so don't be afraid that may take a lot of time it depends on internet connection my internet connection here is kind of poor and yeah so i'll see you after the dependencies are finished so <coughs> uh, when you open the index.html on the web folder of the project tap on your favorite browser you'll see some browser icons on the top right Open favorite browser and the, uh, the the application set to build. Mm -hmm. As you can see, there are some actions being completed right now. After they finish being completed, I uh, will see that uh, the that application, the Flutter application, I mean, I'm sorry about that, the Flutter application will run on the browser that you have selected, and. It will run just the same way that as it runs on on mobile and stuff. So I think you'll be excited to see this. So let's wait for these tasks actions to be completed. As you can see, we are standing at 701 out of 717. It doesn't take a lot of time. It depends on your machine, the speed of your computer. Uh, personally, I have a slow machine. I don't have that fast of a machine. It's not a beast. But soon enough. Uh, I'll be doing tutorial for you guys with a better machine, better resolution, 
and even I'll include a better microphone and a better even a webcam. Okay, guys. So yeah, as it's building, I just just go to the browser. I tap on Chrome. So Chrome is the browser I'll be using. Let me drag it a little bit to the left. As you see, the action has been completed. Completed some action. You can see that it completed 713 out of 717 tasks. That's almost 99 point something percent. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to for you guys to see. The build is completed, guys, now. So let's refresh this page. refreshing this page you will see the flutter application yeah you will see it mm -hmm. it takes a lot, kind of a lot of time longer time it's mainly because I have a slow I have a slow PC let's wait oh, the, the actions are not yet completed now the actions are completed fully, succeeded after 3 minutes and 4 seconds. I, it usually takes a, a shorter time, uh, but uh, I don't know what the problem was today. So the app is loading, let's just wait for it. And yeah. It will run the flat application in this browser. I hope you are excited to do this as I am. And let me try to refresh the page. The Flutter for Web doesn't support Hot Reload yet, but soon we will promise that. Because it's still in a technical preview stage, so we can't control anything. And also, we can't do anything, anything related to anything. You can do anything with it, but beware of some bugs. Yeah. And BAM! The flat application is here. As you can see, a really nice window, nice, really nice application. You can see the debug check banner, the debug banner, which is common in flat applications. And so, guys, from here, we're going to recreate the counter application. The counter application, I, I, I hope you know what, what I mean. If you are it's a kind of a template which first appears on a mobile device when you build your first flutter project which is not the case on web but on mobile so you just try to recreate that 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 application and see where we go from that uh, okay just to prove to you guys that this thing is working let me just change the color of the app I think it's usually somewhere in the main dot that file. Uh -huh, primary swatch. Yeah. Let me use color purple. Let me type purple. Uh, this PC is kinda slow, so you have to bear with me. Typing purple. Yes, let us save. Control S and go back to your browser where the Flutter app is running and refresh the page. In future, it will be able to support hot reload. You just be saving and all the changes appear as it is on mobile, Android, and iOS. Just save, change appears on here. On your device as you can see it's completely working and now we're ready to go to build the flat account application um, yeah so first of all let, let's delete all this the class home page let's delete the class and all things below it and this home widget of the application and let's uh, let's create a new stateful widget 
when you're using IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code or Android Studio, you can just type STF. It's a shortcut for for creating the stateful widgets. I don't know why it's not reacting. STF to give you the stateful widget. To give you an option for you to uh, get a stateful widget. Just tap. Okay. Tap on enter. Give the class a name. Let me give it home page. That will be its name. And yeah. On the material app, we shall press the home home option as the home page. Okay. So I hope you're getting what I'm doing. If I save this page and refresh the browser, you'll see that the page will be blank. The page will not, the page will not have any, it will be completely blank. Waiting. I think it's slow because I'm recording while on 1080p while while doing this stuff, so it will be kind of slow. So let's just wait. Oh, we have an error. That's why it can't load. So let's just still reload. Or let's place some content on the app uh, before we go on. So, home do something, return container. Let's return a scaffold. Let's define the. Oh, let me go to the presentation mode for you guys to, to see what I'm typing. Maybe you're doing this video on phone or something. Let me, open, let me open the presentation mode so that you guys will see. Watch, did it just crash? What just happened? So guys, now I've entered the presentation mode for you guys to view what I'm doing. Maybe I'm doing this video on a smaller screen, so I just want you to see the color. Yeah, as you've seen, you run the first flat application, and they are going to recreate the counter application as I said earlier. So let's define the app bar. App bar. Colon. Give it a title. Title with a text. Title. Give the title. And let's make the title to be center. To be centered on the screen. Title to be true. Let's save. Let's try to refresh the page to see how it appears now. Yes. So, guys, as you've seen, you created the app bar and placed the text, the title text, on the center. So next we design the floating action button. I think 
it also does a lot of floating motion button is it's a small round button that appears on mostly android apps mostly on the bottom right it was less defined that mm, floating action button uh, let's first de de declare the body the body of the scaffold the body should be a center center widget in flat everything is a widget and every widget have a child the child of the center will be a text not every widget has a child but most widgets have children text let's 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 let's, let's say the uh, app usually says button pressed how many times mm -hmm. you'll understand what i'm doing just go on doing following the steps that i'm taking let's just clear the floating option button Let's define its parameters. Which is child is a text uh, because I don't know how to icons are implemented differently on on this. So you have to bear with me. I just use the text. Icons are implemented, are implemented differently on web. Let's refresh the page and see how how it appears. Hope you like it. It's kind of slow because my machine is slow and I'm kind of recording so BAM! As you can see, see the center widget, the, the text has been centered because of the center widget. The center widget aligns everything, all its children to the rest, to the, to the center. You can see the floating option button with a little shadow effect. Yeah? As you click on it, you don't feel any ripple effect as flatter buttons do, flatter material buttons do. But we can, we're gonna change that by adding a, an unpressed, unpressed, uh, an unpressed command. Press, let's just put an empty method. And yeah, control save. Let's refresh the page. Now you see the button. It's just some, some ripple effect when I tap on it. And it will be able to run while I expect it. when you see when I tap on it you see some some effect you know yeah are you happy <laughs> okay so let's create the counter method let's first define a number mm, variable number is equals to one is equals to zero button pressed mm, let's press the variable here to define how many times the button will be pressed uh, to declare widgets inside text you can use a percentage sign a uh, dollar sign then you write the, the 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 name of the variable and it will appear in the text let's refresh the page and uh, you see the text I think this text is too small I'll also apply some styling to this text to make it big enough so that you can see and bam as you can see now uh, it is up and running button press zero times let's let's add some styling to this so that it may appear bigger style text style mm, no mm -hmm. font weight font size font size let's give it a 50 yeah. and for this side for this uh, plus sign let's give it a font size let's style it a little bit Let's give it a 30. Ok. 
que ven bueno, el SEO es al refresh de page y see that uh, it shows an effect you'll see how the the text has been styled and make it appear more appealing to the eye bam as you can see it's a little bigger and now you can see it better okay let's create the method for increasing the number just a simple method to make it I didn't want to do something like a hello world application because uh, hello world application has been used from time to more and we are in 2019 so you know what I mean let's create a method avoid increase that's a method huh. and what the method does it will set it will set the state in setful widgets a stateful widget enables the state of the variables of the element to be changed. A stateless widget, this element can't be changed, they remain static. That's why I chose the stateful widget to create the homepage class. Let's set the state, set state. The state is a method used to change the state of, of something. Number, number which is the variable we declared here. increased by one each time the button is pressed and on the unpressed method of this floating action button let's press uh, the increase number button let's create uh, increase number method let's press there so each time the floating action button will be the button will be pressed um, it will increase the number by one Observed. Let me refresh the page. But in future, it will be able to support short reload in the future stable versions, maybe in the beta version or the stable version. Yeah, which will become out later in the year. When I tap on the floating issue, see that the number increases. Yes, let me stop at 21 because that's my age. <laughs> and so, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video and please subscribe for more content and comment on the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know other applications you'd like me to to create using Flutter for web or even mobile applications. I'm not limited. I I'm a pretty experienced Flutter developer. I have like four months experience. And I pretty know a lot of things, kind of a lot of things, not that much of a lot of things, but kind of a lot of things, you know what I mean. So, and we can do it together. So guys, bye, and we shall, I shall see you in the next video.